So a couple years back for me was the first time I actually fully quit my job and went full time into my business. Now, this was a multiple year dream. It took me over three years and three months every single night and every weekend working on my business before I could actually make enough money to quit my job. And I wasn't bawling by any stretch. It was like enough just to live, like a low full time income. Now in this video, I wanna answer a reader question on how I would go about doing what I did basically. If you have a day job, you need to pay your rent, but there's something you're passionate about on the side. How do you actually transition to that when you have already nine or 10 hours of the day occupied and you come home tired? What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. So I wanna answer my buddy Steven's question when he asked, hey man, I'm still following your journey. I'm currently struggling with the dilemma that I have a great job at a startup, but my passion has always been music and singing. I'm creating an EP right now and planning to release it by summer as a side thing to see if I would get traction or not. Would be curious on your perspective. I hope you're doing well. Now here's the thing. You're gonna hear a lot of advice from people that say like to burn the ships, that famous Alexander the Great or whoever quote that they were on this battlefield, they landed and the general gave the command to burn all the ships because then the men either were basically dying or they were gonna go home in the enemy's ships essentially. And the rumor, the story, the legend is that they won because of that. Well, I don't know about you, but we're not in war. We're trying to build a business, hopefully, or do something we're passionate about on the side until we can transition to doing it full time. Now, I personally tried burning the ships multiple times. And in fact, I quit my job every six months <laughs> until I could eventually fully quit it and make enough income. So what that meant was that I always kept one part-time job 20 hours a week and I would quit the second job every six months thinking that this was gonna be it and it never was. What was much smarter that I eventually did was I just accepted this was gonna take longer than I thought and no matter how long it took, I was gonna persist until I made it happen. And it took me over three years. I thought it would take six months. So it usually will take longer than you think, but it's of course it's worth it. And this is the way I would go about doing it because this is the way I did go about doing it. So the first thing revolves around the way you use your time. Now for me, what I would recommend is you probably have a nine to five. And if you do, there's a couple things to keep in mind. The first being, if you can get a job that pays you just enough to live, but is very, very not demanding on your time. If it is not demanding, people don't need to report to you, your boss isn't on your ass all day, that's the best case scenario because you can tune out, put all your mental, emotional energy into what you're trying to build, what you're passionate about, and honestly, half these nine to fives, like, what do you work, like two, three hours of real work a day? I mean, that's how many of my jobs were. You could sneak in at least an hour or two of your business, even if it's just thinking and strategy and reading during that time. But the key thing is that if you can find the least demanding job possible just to pay your bills, do it. That's what I did personally. And eventually if they let you have like a remote agreement or work from home, scale down the hours until it's maybe 30 instead and only 10 at home. And then you could slack on the ones at home. So the first thing was that if you can reduce the day job to make it less demanding and just make enough just to live because all your mental energy and all your work is gonna be going into building a better future. Now the second thing that I did was I would time block every single night three hours for my business. And here's the way I did it. The first thing was that because I worked a nine to five and it took a lot of energy, I would go to the gym for more energy. I had my dinner packed. I would go right to a cafe from seven o'clock at night until 10 p.m. at night. And I would have my, my dinner essentially, sit down in that cafe and do three hours, seven days a week. So you'll still have a life. You'll be done by 10 o'clock. You could go home, watch an hour or two of Netflix and then get up for your job. Plenty of time to do that. So what do you actually do in these three hours? So let's say you, like Steven, want to be a musician or an artist. This is what I would focus on. Dedicate one hour towards each core skill you need to focus on and learn. So for example, if you're a musician, the first hour might be making the music, like actually creating, being good at your craft or being good at your skill. The second hour would be studying sales and marketing. Like how am I going to get paid enough to quit my job, whether that is a thousand a month or 3000 a month or 5,000 a month, whatever your number is to comfortably quit your job, to not stress that hour is dedicated to how do I make money? How do musicians make money? I don't know. A YouTube channel with YouTube ad revenue, merchandise, selling singles, selling music on iTunes. 
brand deals? I don't know. You have to research it and figure out and dedicate that one hour to what are you doing to make money? It doesn't matter if you like it. It doesn't matter if you want to do it. You have to do it if you want to be able to pay your rent. And then the third hour would be dedicated towards growth. Like, how do I build a business? Dedicate that hour to the actual study and improvement of your skills. Like, I didn't know how to, I don't know anything about business. Nothing. I was just a personal trainer who wanted an online business. That's all I knew. Now, five years later, four years later, whatever it is, I have five books on Amazon, over 100,000 YouTube subscribers, full-time income, and I'm in med school. Like, I didn't see any of this. I didn't know how to do any of this. You are a human being, not a slug. You can figure this out. So what I would do is you dedicate that third hour to how does this all come together? Like, what is the business strategy I have to learn? And for me, that meant learning sales and marketing, the two words no one wants to learn, but everyone who's successful has to learn. And then from there, like understanding the the umbrella of an online business, which means content leads to some kind of email form, probably. And then that leads to educating people and selling your products or your merch or your EP or whatever it is. So dedicate the first hour to your skill. Become amazing at music. Make your music. Do your craft. Paint. Write. Whatever it is. The second hour is sales and marketing. That is your quit your job plan. Hardcore. Only think about money. The third hour is the growth plan. Where does this all come in? What skills do I have to learn? How do I create YouTube videos? How do I write content? How do I create a business? How do I even sell? What is sales? What is the word marketing? What does it even mean? And when you have this regimented three-part approach, you could literally have a notebook or an Evernote document with each strategy you're testing out in each one of those domains. And that's exactly what I did. Because you have to both be good at what you do, study business, and then figure out the whole process of sales and marketing to actually have something that allows you to quit your job. Now, the last thing that people often don't mention is how the hell do you keep going? How do you do the motivation part, right? It took me three years and three months and 11 days to quit my job. And I'll tell you, it sucked. The whole process sucked. It was not like I was jazzed about my passion because fitness isn't really my passion. I love personal development, but Chinese medicine now is much more of a passion. But I didn't know what I was passionate about. So how did I keep going? Now, the biggest thing, first of all, honestly, was pain. I just wanted to quit my job for so many years. It was the pain that drove me. But tactically, it was having a weekly mastermind group. Now, I host, I actually have a personal free mastermind, and I have a paid mastermind for students. So if you want, you can check out the mastermind in the description link there below. But the key thing is to pick two or three friends that are ambitious and they want to change their life. And every week, all you do is you do a 30-minute call where each of you takes five minutes to describe what you're working on, what you're struggling with, and then you can help each other problem solve and keep going. And that by itself has been the main habit that has allowed me to keep going for four or five years, especially when a lot has happened in between. All those jobs I quit that I thought I would not have to take up again, but I did. My best friend committing suicide. You know, dating a girl for five years and that relationship ending. Starting and continuing med school, and yet I haven't quit at all. And it's not because I'm special, it's because I have systems and habits in place. So that is what I would consider if you want to build your passion and build your freedom plan in the long run. Don't quit your job. Just accept the process. Don't resist it internally. You'll make yourself sick like I did. Accept, no matter how long it takes, I'll keep going. Have that mastermind. Dedicate one hour per day to the skills you need. And, you know, before you know it, eventually you're going to be there. And whether it takes you one year or ten years, who gives a crap? right? Like you're going to have to work for the next 40, 50, 60 years, right? So you might as well start building the plan towards doing what you love. At least that was my philosophy. All right, guys. So I hope that helps. Your action step is down there below. Let me know for you, what is your passion? I want to know. I'm very curious. What's up, guys? I hope that video helped. This is a very important video near and dear to my heart. It's a process I went through. It took a very long time and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life so far. So don't underestimate it, but also don't quit. Now, the best way to stay in touch, if you want to start my weight loss and personal development challenge, go to modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube. It's also in the description there below. And in addition, you can check out my latest two videos right here and right here. And otherwise, I will catch you in the next video.